Hello and welcome to ZAPR.com. This is not a training or a technical video. Neither we are talking about any niche area of SAP in this short video. Rather, we'll talk about a learning path confusion with the students and SAP ABAP developers have today. Hi, my name is Raju Shrest and I have been working in ERP and ABAP related technologies since the summer of 2006. In this current world, SAP has been innovating at a very lightning speed. We hear a new terminology every other week. By the time an ABAP developer starts learning a new technology, there is another buzzword in the SAP ABAP development community. In short, we have the problem of plenty. What I am going to say today will be a very unpopular opinion and I am expecting lots of backslashes from the advanced futuristic ABAP community and other experts. So even before I speak, I beg their pardon. So we hear a lot of questions from freshers in SAP ABAP whether ABAP is going to die. And my answer is no. ABAP is here to survive. We might need to metamorph and obtain other skill sets, but at the end of the day, the ABAP developer will still be there working in all SAP implementation and support projects. Should the, a normal ABAP developer learn SAP BTP, IRPA, SAP Chatbot, SAP Mendix, SAP AppGyber, APIG and whatnot? I would like to stay mute for this question for now. Today I will suggest a simple learning path which will help all ABAP developers to support most of the clients throughout the world. I believe in 80-20 rule which says that 80% of the results can be obtained by 20% of our action. So in this learning path, I would let all freshers or those confused ABAP developers know what are those 20% of technologies which we need to learn to support almost 80% of our clients worldwide. So number one, I'm assuming that all these freshers and new ABAP developers are traditional ABAP developers who have worked in all rise up objects. So if you are one of them, then the next thing which you should learn is object oriented programming. SAP has been advocating object oriented since the early 2000, but I think this is high time we should start adopting it and using it. And mind it, object oriented is not a programming language, but just a methodology and ABAP developers can easily learn them. So traditional ABAP development, object-oriented development. After this, the third thing you should learn is SAP NetWeaver Gateway and OData Services. Yeah, as a backend developer, we should know in and out of SAP OData Service development, implementation and testing. The fourth is we should learn ABAP 7.4 and above syntaxes. Not because it is the buzzword or something, but because Every other developer is writing the new syntax. And if you go to a new project and you have to support someone else code, then you will be in soup if you do not know the sub app 7.4 and other syntaxes. So it should be in our learning kitty for that is ABAP 7.4 and above. So once you have worked or practiced ABAP 7.4, the next is we should learn ABAP on HANA. So ABAP on HANA is an ocean in itself. So in that, you, we might not want to venture into the area of data modeling, which our BW friends do. Rather, we would stick to around our ABAP development stuff. And I would say I would focus mostly on core data services, which is the pillar of S4 HANA. We should know not only write a good core data service or CDS views, but also we should know about the virtual data, virtual data modeling or VDN. We should know about how to optimize them. And then we should also learn about uh, AMDP and procedures. They are very much needed in most of the ABAP on HANA projects. Next, after ABAP on HANA is RESTful application programming. Yeah, so we should know RAP programming um, both for on cloud and for on premise. So after this, after this six, if you still have the energy and the enthusiasm, I would say focus on SAP UI5 and Fiori developments. So that's all. So these are the seven learning paths which I would suggest for all ABAP developers who are confused. 
if you know all of this then there are other things to learn but i would say focus on on this seven and you should be able to support and help in implementation projects of any clients um, at least say 80 percent of the clients throughout the world so always remember the 80 percent and the 20 percent so this is just the 20 percent of the actions which we need to take to support 80 percent of our client worldwide let me draw the same thing which i told in this seven path in a small slide so that way you will have a visual effect of what i just spoke let me write it down what i have just told about the seven topics the first one is traditional abap so this traditional abap would cover all rice so i hope most professors know about it w is for workflow report interface conversion enhancement and forms so next in line should be object oriented programming for ABAP. So once you know the traditional ABAP, you should focus on OOPS ABAP or object oriented programming. So once you have mastered this, the third one is OData services. The third one is OData services. Next in line is the modern ABAP, that is ABAP 7.4 plus and above. All right, so we should know ABAP 7.4 and up. next is so next is ABAP on HANA so what do you know or need to know in ABAP on HANA you say CDS VDM AMDP and some SQL script all right so these are the fifth one next and very important is RESTful ABAP programming or RESTful application programming RESTful application programming so please pardon my handwriting and the seventh one and the last one which i'm biased towards is sap ui5 and fury so these are the seven topics which i said that will cover 80 percent of our clients worldwide so this is this might be just the 20 percent of our action which will cover 80% of our clients worldwide. In the next video, I would like to, or I will try to elaborate more on the seven topics which I am biased on. Uh, I would request your genuine feedback from all the experts and ABAP developer fraternity. See you in the next video. Thank you very much.